Good morning. Good morning, morning, everybody. All right, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Carl, and no matter whom you are on life's journey, we thank you so much for being here with us this day. We pray that your hearts will be open to hear all that God will have for you to hear. We pray that you will continually seek our God because our God loves you so much. So we thank you so much for being here with us this day. Um, If you would, please take the time to look into the bulletin for the things that are happening within our church and for the things that we're trying to promote and for us all to understand. Um, Before we continue, we're going to have a few other announcements, and Mr. Vargo is going to come up, and then we'll continue with the service. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Vargo. I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees for anybody that doesn't know me. I've got two quick announcements for this morning. Uh, First announcement is the pastor did email out the proposed 2022 budget to everybody that we have email addresses for. But if you want a hard copy or you did not get it by email, there are copies in the narthex on the table by the Bible. So help yourself. If you have any questions about the proposed budget, please come and see me. Shoot me an email. uh, Call me, whatever you need. um, And I'll do my best to answer them. And my last announcement is to the First Congregational Church of West Haven active members, this is a call to a special meeting in accordance with Article 8, Section 2B2 of the bylaws. A special meeting of the congregation is hereby called at the request of the Board of Trustees and will be held on Sunday, November 14th, 2021, in the sanctuary and live streamed via Zoom immediately following the worship service. The purpose of this meeting is to act on the following items of business. One, to discuss the scope of work for the Steeple Preservation Project. Two, to discuss the funding of the Steeple Preservation Project. And three, to vote in support of the scope of work for the Steeple Preservation Project as approved by the Board of Trustees. No other business is to come before this meeting. Those attending over Zoom will be able to ask questions in the chat feature, which will be read aloud and answered by the presenter, Christopher Vargo, Jr., Chairman, Board of Trustees. Respectfully submitted, Ann Fletcher, Church Clerk. Okay, we're going to turn the service over to our musicians, and we're going to have some praise and worship going on here. Thank you. If you would like to join us in our prelude, you can turn your hymnals to number 509, 509, Onward Christian Soldiers. It's an old World War I hymn, and we're going to do verses 1, 2, and 4. Cross of 
I think we're out of sync today for some reason. So um, I'm trying to hold my peace on this, but um, I think we're at the opening hymn number 52, You Are My God. And um, For our joys and concerns, as I communicate frequently, if there are things that you would like for us as a church to convey to others so we all can be in um, corporate prayer with those concerns and joys, please let us know. You can either draft your responses on papers that are found within your pews. I think there are green ones and there are yellow ones for specific prayer. And also you can call the office and we will be more than glad to take the message information down so that when we come to service on Sundays, as our, we are today, then I will be able to convey them so we all can be on one accord. I have a prayer request for all people who will be affected by the La Palma volcano eruption, lava damage, and island destruction. May God watch over and protect all who are affected. And continual prayers for Steve Hildrich, his wife, and his brother-in-law, who was rec is recovering still and from slowly and um, please keep them in prayer and that his wife will continue to be of encouragement to her brother. Since there are no others, I'll pause right now for a moment of personal and private reflection, then I will say a corporate prayer for us all. Our God, be with us this day and every day, that our hearts will continually be open to you, that your Holy Spirit will lead us, direct us, and guide us, that you will help us, our God, to continue to trust you in all things, that our joys will be made known to you, Lord, that our concerns will equally be made known to you, that you will help us in every situation of our lives, Lord, regardless of the challenges, the problems, anything that we may be going through, Lord, continually be with us. Let us continue to trust you, our God. Let us trust you. Let us walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, we pray even as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, everyone. John Lewis, I am the um, uh, council moderator for the church here. And um, I'm up here now to uh, just make some emphasis for our October mission, state, our mission emphasis this year, um, this October. Uh, the emphasis is on the Columbus House. Uh, been around since 1982 and uh, working to provide help and solutions for homelessness uh, in our area, uh, the greater New Haven area. Uh, they've expanded their work to include not only emergency shelters, but services uh, to help people become independent and to find uh, permanent living solutions. So the envelopes, uh, the brown ones, are in the back and up here. And if you, uh, you know, feel it in your heart, so please uh, uh, donate. Every dime goes there, so there's no... Uh, Everything that comes in goes out. Also, uh, again, for our offering, which is usually would be this time of day, um, time of the service, excuse me, it's another function of worship. Um, I'd like to give a scripture here. Uh, the uh, brown boxes are in the back uh, and up here, if you'd like to uh, donate to that also. We'd like to see 100% participation. Uh, as this meeting that's, the, that's about to happen, um, about the steeple, uh, we need um, we need a miracle. So um, we <laughs> we hope everyone um, you know pays attention to that, and um, uh, we need to have it repaired. This is the center of our town, and uh, it would uh, it's something that needs that has to happen. So we hope everyone uh, is diligent about that. The scripture today I'd like to um, read uh, in in reference to the the. Um, uh, the offerings is the 35th chapter of, chapter of Exodus. Um, this is uh, regarding gifts to the tabernacle. Now, before there was a permanent tabernacle in Israel, while the uh, Israelites were in the uh, in the Sinai uh, desert there um, in Arabia, I just want to emphasize that um, that they uh, had to have a, a tabernacle set up. Uh, because they were guided by day and by night. Uh, there was a cloud uh, by night, uh, fire, so that they could see uh, when, they were, when they were moving, and uh, there was a cloud over them by day, but it was the Lord's presence. So the 35th chapter and the 4th through uh, the uh, uh, ninth verse. Uh, and Moses spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze, and you can still give that too. Um, uh, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair. Ram skin dyed red, badger skins, and acacia wood. Uh, oil for the light and the spices uh, for the anointing oil and the sweet incense. Onyx stone and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Um, if you, if you uh, have time, read uh, further into that because it's, uh, it, it sets up how the, the tabernacle was set up. It may seem a little tedious, but again, this is all... There's a, there's a bigger picture here. So if you get a chance, read it. Um, and the, the beauty of it is at the end of the, uh, the 40th chapter, it basically says that uh, God's presence was hovering over them. So they were always protected. Okay, if they were attacked, they always came out victorious. So there was a blessing because they gave of themselves and they believed God's word. So let's do that too. Thank you. Please look into your bulletins for an insert. The song is called This I Believe. I find 
Father everlasting, the all-creating One, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender, suffered and crucified, forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name. Scripture reading today comes from the first book of Samuel, chapter 30, verses 1 through 6. Now when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid on the Negev and on Ziklag. They had attacked Ziklag, burned it down, and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. <clears throat> they killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. When David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down, and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives had been taken captive, Ahinoam of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal of Carmel. David was in great danger, for the people spoke of stoning him, because all the people were bitter in spirit for their sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. The word of the Lord. Our God, we thank you for the hearing of your word, that your word will fall upon the good ground, the good soil of our hearts, therein allow your word to grow within us 30, 60, and 100 fold. These things we ask in the name of King Yahshua Jesus, amen. The sermon titled this day is The Winning Attitude, 1 Samuel 30. One through six. 
We all need encouragement from time to time. All of us at some time or other faces crises when everything in our lives seems to fall apart, either physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, financially, relationally. These challenges come upon us. There are times in discouragement when things go wrong, even when we're trying to do everything right. At such times, people may say, that's what you get for trying to do what's right. <laughs> there are times of uncertainty when we don't know how things are going to, in fact, turn out. There are times of stress when the load that's on us seems to be so heavy that we can no longer bear to carry it. The tasks that we're dealing with seem more than what we can handle. There are even times when our sense of security itself is actually threatened. See, it is in all of these times that we are fighting battles of some type. And unfortunately, many of us are not winning these battles. See, those who win these battles, when it occurs, they have one common thing that is universal. They have a faith that does not quit. Nobody has had more struggles than David. To focus on one of his struggles, we read it today. Now when David and his men was in Ziklag on the third day, the Amalekites had made a raid in the Negev and on Ziklag. They attached Ziklag, burned it down, and taken captive the women, and all who were with it, both small and great, they killed none of them, but carried them off and went their way. But when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned down, and their wives and sons and daughters were taken captive. 1 Samuel 31 through 3. See, there is a whole lot here that I would love to unpack, and it really needs a patient study in order to do this subject justice here. But let me say, first of all, that David being in the position that he was in, should never have, have been put in that position. You see, David was not in God's will being where he was. And usually when we are not in God's will doing what God will have for us to do, we seem to always venture into areas that causes us trouble. Reacting to this trauma, we read, then David and all the people with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. Can you imagine the distress, the pain, the anguish you were in, someone would be in, that you weep and weep and weep and weep and weep, and you can't even weep anymore, you're in so much pain. And after things got even worse than that, when the people couldn't weep anymore, they started to make excuses and began to blame David even to the point of threatening his life. See, it's always easy to blame people and to blame somebody else or look for a scapegoat when crises come up in your life. <laughs> but see, in the midst of these crises, if we ever need the grace of God to be with us, it is in these times of challenges, struggles, and pain. And this is the lesson that we need to learn and to understand today. That the grace you receive from God will always be equal to the challenges you face. Let me say this again. The grace you receive from God will always be equal to the challenges you face, always. Then we come to the solution to David's problem, and we continue to read verse 6 of 1 Samuel 30, and it says, But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. See, this is the winning attitude 
knowing how to refocus ourselves despite any situation, any problem, anything that we're going through, how do we refocus ourselves to get on the right side of a wrong problem? Most people never knew that Lord Nelson of England's famous hero of the sea suffered from seasickness. Yet the man who sank all of Napoleon's fleet refused to let his personal struggles deny him of his destiny. See, Lord Nelson learned to deal with the struggles, the challenges he had to overcome his weakness and to conquer it, and he did it every single day. Now, I might not know the struggles that any of you may be going through, but all of us have battlegrounds and battles that we're going through, and we need to adopt a winning attitude in order to effectively deal with these challenges. Now, nobody may pin a medal on you saying, my God, you did so good going through that challenge. Man, let me just tap you on your back and say you, you, everything's good. But let me say this. See, when we trust God in the midst of our battles and challenges, when God strengthens us in the midst of our challenges and things, we can have the winning attitude and know that God is with us despite the challenges that we may be going through. See, we don't have to wait, unfortunately, for people to tap us on our back to help us to get through our mess. But we need to understand the fact that God can strengthen us in any challenge, in any battle, if you want God's help. And this is the lesson that we learn from the life of David. Looking back at his struggles and his challenges and how God delivered him, we learn the secret to David's success. And he says here, you arm me with strength for battle, 2 Samuel 22 and 40. And you train my hands for war, Psalms 18 and 34. This is why these things are written for us, so we can look at the lives of how God has worked in the lives of other faithful men and women and see how God was able to strengthen them in the midst of their challenges, their problems, their concerns, their pain, their despair, and in light of all the things they were going through, they were able to say, God can help me get through it. Sometimes in the struggles and the challenges, we have to be taught the lessons that God is trying to help us to understand so we can appreciate how good, how great God is in delivering us from the things that we were or may be still going through. It seems that God was also teaching David a lesson that he had to learn and understand so he could appreciate the fact of all that God would be doing for him. David's experiences forced him to go to a place that he was first unwilling to go to. David had to search deep within to pull out what God had already put in him. But because David did not focus on what God had for him to do, David got caught up in some mess that he never should have been caught up in. Let me explain this to you. How many here know the story of David and Goliath? You all do, right? Listen to this. But if you read that story carefully, you will find out that Goliath was from Gath. Now here David and his men are now taking refuge in Gath, now serving the king of Gath. And this is why all hell broke loose on David. Being someplace where he should not have been, I, I got so much, I'll leave that there. But anyway. <laughs> but see, David had a choice. See, David, in all of his mess, he could have stayed there, looking at his situation, 
weeping and crying and weeping and crying. And to, Lord, it ain't going to get no better for me. Or he could look beyond his problem and see that God was able to help him in the midst of his struggles. And see, David finally got it right. See, he reconnected with God and he met God in the midst of his despair. And God restrengthened David so that he was able to say that he could be strengthened in God as he trusts him. Let me say this to you. Unfortunately, family, friends, relationships, and all the things that we find security in, unfortunately, if I'm the first to tell you I'm sorry, it's going to fail you sometimes. And when those things happen, when you lose all of your support systems, all of the things around you where you found comfort and peace in, when that fails you, you got to understand this is where you have to encourage yourself in your faith, just as David did. See, David finally got it right and understood that, hey, look, God, I, I'm wrong for being where I'm at. But David remembered the things that were communicated to him by the prophet Samuel. He remembered God's faithfulness when delivering him from the lion and the bear when he was a little boy. And in those areas of his life, he was able to lock into that and say that if God can deliver me from the bear, if God can deliver me from the lion, God can deliver me in this mess I'm going through right now, and God can help preserve me and my family so I can do the things that God will have for me to do. Because David had a call upon his life to do what God will have for him to do, but David was being disobedient going to Ziglag. And this is where the problems came for David. So from our reading, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. See, strengthening ourselves in God means that we are to remind ourselves of all the things that God tells us in his word. And we apply those truths to our life and to our life circumstances and their situations. See, you strengthen yourself in God, it becomes an intentional act on your behalf. It is not something that is done passively. When it says that David strengthened himself, the Hebrew verb implies that it was a persistent and a continuous effort. This is what we have to understand. You can't be passive in your challenges and in your struggles. See, nothing is passive about seeking our God in the times of despair in our lives. But sometimes we have to grab ourselves by the lapel and shake ourselves and give ourselves a stern talking to to wake us up from the apathy that we're going through because of our challenges. And it seems that David did this as well. We read in Psalms 43 and 5, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help, and my God. Earlier I said that David was in the wrong place because of his disobedience by not trusting God and by doing something that he should not have done. But now David, realizing the errors of his ways, now seeks God for direction. As a side note, we need to understand the sin that David committed here, and I'm going to explain it to you right now. David and all of Israel were to never, ever make alliances with pagan nations. They were not supposed to do that. They were explicitly prohibited from doing this according to God. So when David did this, he set himself in a place for destruction to occur. And that should be a lesson for all of us to understand as well. And I won't even continue to deliver on it. But anyway, David finally gets it right. 
And now he slows down and he prays and he asks God, God, should I pursue? And God answers and tells him, yes. And this is what we need to understand. In the midst of our struggles and our challenges, sometimes we need to step back, slow down, get still before our God, ask God to help us in the areas of our lives where we're having struggles and challenges. And you will, if you wait on the Lord, God will provide you with what you need. And this is the challenge that we have when we don't trust our God. So real trust in God is moving with God as God has directed us through his word. Real trust is when you walk with God according to the word of God. The story goes about a little boy who lost his right hand in an accident. And when the doctor questioned him about his disability, he replied, I don't have a disability. I just don't have a right hand. <laughs> Later, the boy, the doctor of the boy, finds out that this boy was the leading, listen to this, was the leading scorer on his basketball team with just one hand. And this boy's philosophy in life is this. It is not what you've lost that counts. It's what you have that counts. Knowing that God is always with us, even in what we perceive to be a loss, God can strengthen us to have a winning attitude. And by God's grace helping you to develop a winning attitude, you can call upon God at any time, in any situation, in any circumstance, in any problem in your life, and you're going to know that God will listen and hear you because God wants to meet the needs of you because you are God's child. Trust God. Trust God this very moment, no matter what you're going through. I guarantee you, if you will just slow down, sync your life with what God has communicated to you through his word, you will find strength, you will find encouragement, you will find God will work on your behalf to resolve all these things, and you too can develop the winning attitude. All right, now, grace and peace, everybody. Amen. Please turn your hymnals to number 373. Change my heart, O oh God.
everybody. Glory to our God. Our God lives. Our God reigns. Our God is the controller of the universe and everything in it. Our God is awesome and is worthy of all our praises and honor and glory. As we leave this place but not the presence of our God, let us continue to trust him. Let us trust God knowing that God loves us so. There is nothing too small that you may be going through or too big that you will ever experience that God is not ready and prepared to assist and help you with. Let us trust God. Let us trust our God. For our God loves us so. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 You will come here? Okay. In heavenly armor we enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory. Sing glory. 